What's up guys, it's Tatum. Just want to give you a little intro to explain what this video is. You guys win, I made a podcast. Uh, right now it's not audio only, we're working on that. I just don't know anything um, on how to do that, but um, this is between two nodes. Uh, it's a little less silly, more serious, but we still go have a little fun, you know what I'm saying? Um, talked to CK in this one from BTC Inc. and uh, we talked about the Bitcoin conference and I wanted to plug real quick that you can use code Tatum Turnup somewhere on screen uh, to get 10% off your ticket to the conference. It is May 18th through 20th at uh, in Miami, Florida. It's going to be amazing. Uh, stay tuned to learn more about what you can expect there. Also wanted to thank Blockstream for sponsoring this video. You can use code Tatum Turnup uh, for 10% off on the Blockstream store. And uh, pretty soon on April 13th, I will be having a full review and tutorial on uh, Blockstream Jade. Um, and I'm excited to do that. So, Blockstream, thanks for sponsoring. This is Between Two Nodes. It's finally a podcast. Oh my God. Hello. And welcome to our first episode of Between Two Nodes. Today we have uh, CK from BTC Inc. Uh, how are you today? Tatum, you, you kind of sound a little weird, man. I just got back from Costa Rica and my voice is a little hoarse. Sorry about that, but uh, I, I hopefully I can you know you can still hear me all right. No, I I mean I can hear you. you just you sound like you're in the Matrix. I I don't know what you're talking about um carl do i sound all right it, it sounds like you're trying to sing a, a pop song or something oh, you have a filter wait. on or what hold on you, you sound like kanye okay dang it this is this is hard um does this sound any better <laughs> check check no. one two okay <laughs> maybe right. maybe dang it all right so anyway now that I figured that out, uh, welcome to the inaugural episode of Between Two Nodes, um, where we get a little more serious and we talk business, kind of, a little bit. Uh, but I do have Christian CK here from BDC Inc. How are you today? What an honor, Tatum, to be the inaugural guest on Between Two Nodes. Uh, excited to talk business. That's what we do. Business all day. Business in Bitcoin. Let's get after it. All right. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? I know that you are, uh, you're both, you're both Bitcoin conference and Bitcoin magazine, right? You're just over, you're president of Bitcoin, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's what my mom says. He's the president of Bitcoin. Um, no, so, uh, I am general manager at Bitcoin, uh, at BTC Inc. Uh, and we do Bitcoin Magazine, we do the Bitcoin Conference, we do a fund called UTXO. As you can see, everything we do is Bitcoin <laughs> themed and oriented. Uh, and yeah, I've been in uh, the Bitcoin space since uh, February 2018, and I've uh, been working at BTC Inc. the entire time, and you know, uh, just really thrilled and honored to be able to Bitcoin all day, every day. You got in, I think, right. I I consider my first uh, my first Bitcoin purchase in September of eighteen, and I, I say purchase because it was on Robinhood and uh, put ten dollars <laughs> in. And as a college kid, uh, the most important thing to me after I put that ten dollars in was I need some beer money, so I sold it three days later for like thirteen bucks and didn't touch it for uh, about two years after that. But nice return um, right there. Yeah. Hey, look, that's what got, I came. I came for number go up. I stayed for the uh, oh, wait. No, that wasn't that wasn't I, I came to get rich. I stayed to get even. That's that's the saying. There we go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, one thing I really did want to hit on was uh, Bitcoin conference that is coming up in what? 57, 56 days, 56 or days, sir, dude. Yes. So last year, last year was like greatest weekend of my entire life it was 100 percent more than what i bargained for uh what can we expect this year it, if someone's returning from a previous bitcoin conference i know a lot has happened in the past year what can you expect if you're returning and then also what can you expect if this is your first time well uh that's uh 
definitely a tough question to answer just because there's so much to cover. Uh, but the Bitcoin conference, we started it in 2019. That was Bitcoin 2019 in San Francisco. Uh, in 2020, we had to cancel it due to COVID. 2021, we moved to Miami. Uh, and then uh, Miami, Miami's event just subsequently continued to blow up. So 2021, 12,000 people. 2022, uh, we had 25,000 people at the event. Uh, this year uh, is going to be huge, uh, just like the past ones have been. But we're not scaling you know, a 2x or a 6x on the previous year. So the actual kind of operations and execution of the event is going to be really, really tight, really, really smooth. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, you know, very pleasurable for all of our attendees in terms of getting there uh, to the Miami Beach Convention Center, having everything set up for you, uh, having a well thought out um, kind of floor plan and uh, well thought out programming that integrates really well with uh, kind of everything that's going on. We got four stages. We have a massive expo hall with hundreds of different Bitcoin companies that are there trying to meet you, win your business, show you their product, hire awesome Bitcoiners. Um, and we're going to have a lot of really cool lounges and different spots for Bitcoiners to come together and hang out. Really what's happening is there's <laughs> no joke, hundreds of different sessions, you know, usually three or four happening at the same time. Um, you know, and I really recommend to Bitcoiners attending, go check out, you know, the must see sessions, the sessions where you're like, I have to see so and so in person. Uh, and then for the rest of the time, network, 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 because it's all about the people that are there in the entire industry comes together for this event. Uh, I like to call it the physical instantiation of the Bitcoin ecosystem. So uh, all of the content is being recorded. We're all going to be posting that on our YouTube and our Rumble and all that good stuff. So just go to the sessions that are must see and make sure to spend time with people in the flesh because Bitcoiners are best in person and there's just boundless opportunities at the Bitcoin conference. Yeah, I uh, I have to fully agree with that. The, um, the networking was kind of a byproduct of what I expected and uh, ended up being just amazing. I. I went to several different side parties, like uh, I went to the Fold Party, um, ended up just hanging out all night with Max Kaiser and Peter McCormick and just like casually talking. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. Like I watch your stuff all the time and now I'm just like chilling. Um, but yeah, that's the, what the Bitcoin conference does. It's, you know, it's you can crazy. shake Sailor's hand and then uh, and then go see Max and then just, you know, on to the next one. Just uh just huge, huge personalities and movers and shakers in the space. And it's just densely populating the, the entire place. Yeah, the Expo Hall is also a really big, uh, really big point for me last year. Like I, most of the time I was just walking around looking at all the different, all the different companies and uh, everything there. There was also some, some guys that were uh, giving out free Bitcoin tattoos and I got put on the list and they were packed up and I could end up, they couldn't fit me in, ended up getting a Bitcoin tattoo later on, I uh, got the <laughs> supply formula, but, uh, yeah, oh, nice. It, it's, that's a, if you know, you know, type of a tattoo right. which is what you want with, with Bitcoin. Yeah. And then, uh, I actually got that from, a an incentive for my geyser fund. I said, if I got a certain amount, I can't remember, um, I'd get the supply formula tattooed and then like, Two months later, I can't remember who it was, but it was some engineer tweeted about how it's like it's not direct, fully correct. Like there's an extended version, and everyone was like, "At Tatum, turn up! At Tatum, turn up! Look at this! Look at this!" And I was like, "Oh, this is not good." But yeah, it's one of those like gentle nods. No like, regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets at all. Um, but I always do say now, like Bitcoin better work, or I'm going to look like an idiot. Uh, so, well, yeah, that's awesome. I do want to ask you about this new mining village. Uh, what what's going to be the? As you can tell, I'm I like mining. What's the what's the mining village and what's uh what can I expect from that at the Bitcoin? Yeah, conference? no. So the for the audience that wants to get down and dirty, we got picks and shovels. We're digging a hole in Miami Beach Convention Center to Dude, build an underground scary. Bitcoin mine. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but. So, you know, as you know, Bitcoin mining is one of the biggest elements of Bitcoin, period. 
like no question asked. So uh, we have, you know, relationships with almost every single Bitcoin mining company in the space. Uh, and we wanted to create, you know, the go to spot for Bitcoin enthusiasts and Bitcoin miners and to show off all the awesome stuff that is happening in Bitcoin mining, which is such an important and sometimes villainized part of Bitcoin. But like that, you know, anyone who knows what's up, like mining is what is up. And uh, one of the things that is going to be in the mining village that I'm super excited about is we have an entire museum of like the history of Bitcoin ASICs and hardware. <laughs> so all the way from the beginning, like tiny little ant miner USB thing uh, to and the butterfly labs all the way to the cutting edge. It's all going to be on display there so people can kind of see the evolution. What? You're speaking Tatum's love language <laughs> right now. I actually, Tatum, so... Do not try to steal anything. <laughs> There's going to be security guards, bro. Dang it. Okay. Um, no, I actually, like, most of the stuff that you'll see uh, behind me uh, whenever I alternate and stuff, but they're older machines. I'm actually working on doing the same thing for... Uh, the a New Orleans Bitcoin hub that we're building where we we show just like an evolution. I talked to MBK this weekend about uh, getting like the old some old um, MK1s and stuff like that and uh, just displaying like evolution of everything like hardware and stuff. But oh dude, I'm excited now. Um, how I, tough is security? You, you could there? be between like a hundred A6, you Look. know, not just two. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'll be sure to wear my vest because I might need. I mean, never mind. We can, don't worry about that. Um, so, CK, tell me about Pitch Day. I've seen you uh, posting it on Twitter on Noster. What What is Pitch Day at the conference? So uh, the conference is three days. Day one is Industry Day. Day two and three are GA days one and two. Uh, so don't get confused by uh, the changing numbers there. But day one is for Industry Pass, uh, Whale Pass, and Media only. Uh, but during our industry day, we are going to have a pitch competition. So uh, we're currently encouraging startups uh, in the Bitcoin space, early projects uh, to put together a pitch, apply uh, to our competition. And we have a rock star panel of judges, uh, all VCs in the space. So great exposure uh, who are evaluating the pitches and they're going to be picking a winner. Uh, the winner is going to win. Uh, you know, advertising from Bitcoin Magazine. They're going to win different support from our different sponsors uh, and potentially uh, get a first round of funding or, you know, a second round of funding, depending on where they are in the process um, to help them continue with their project. And just some past winners of our previous pitch days, that's uh, companies like the Bitcoin Company, companies like our projects and companies like Nunchuck and Albi, you know, some really awesome projects in the space. So looking to do it again, bigger and better this year. I'm partnering again with a lot of awesome VCs to make sure that, um, you know, there's a potential for some incredible deal flow. Uh, and that's really what we're trying to do in general is we want to bring together the most important people with capital and the most cutting edge projects in the space, whether that is lightning, whether that is mining hardware, whether that is Nostra related. Um, you know, we're trying to bring them all together and we're trying to move Bitcoin forward. And something I'm super proud of in general with the Bitcoin conference is companies that have been founded at the Bitcoin conference. So I've been a part of this since 2019, and it's all about bringing together Bitcoin entrepreneurs and making shit happen for Bitcoin. Okay, as you might know, I, uh, CK and I have matching hats. How did that happen? Where can I get, where, where can someone in the audience get one of these hats, Christian? You know, I'm very proud of our hat game over here at Bitcoin Magazine. So uh, thank you for representing uh, with our small Pepe hat. Um, but go to store.bitcoinmagazine.com. Get yourself a Pepe hat. Get yourself a Satoshi hat, a Noster hat. If you dare, an Ordinals hat. That I think that makes you a heathen, but it's there if you want it. We're here about Bitcoining. So uh, we got a bunch of different hats. I love the corduroy ones in particular. Oh, yeah, seriously. Like whenever... My, by the way, this was not planned. Like we didn't. Hey, wear your small Pepe hat. No, like we just noticed uh, when we turned on on the cameras. But um, whenever my girlfriend got this for me, I was like, "Yo, it's corduroy. That's sick." She's like, "I did not know that, but that is tight. It just gives like an extra little umph to it. I like it." Noster. Um, what is there? I, I've I've heard that there's a lot of you know there's a lot of Noster talk in the Bitcoin space, Nostr is not Bitcoin, but it's built by Bitcoiners and it's integrated really well with Bitcoiners. 
I've heard some rumors about some Noster talks at the conference. Uh, what kind of is there going to be any Noster stuff at the conference, or do you have any opinions on that, or just go off on Noster for a little bit? Hell yeah! I mean, I'm a big Noster fan. I think that you asked me to be on this podcast via Noster, which is pretty epic in my opinion. Uh, but pretty much Noster is a protocol for it's like it's almost like an RSS feed on crack. Uh, but it's 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 kind of like Bitcoin in which it's like simple technology is getting mashed together and it just works. And the cool thing is that uh, we're at the very beginning. You're already seeing Twitter replacements and the Bitcoin and Lightning integrations within them are so, so smooth, so, so awesome. Uh, and it just kind of shows you a little glimpse of the future where it's like, hey, I'm so and so I need to do whatever business I need to create whatever value I can create and I can just accept payments immediately uh, and it's it's really really epic so I love seeing the fact that Bitcoiners are building the future of social media I think Bitcoiners are building the future of everything we're building the future of energy grids building the futures of, of money we're building the future of sovereignty and uh, and we are breaking out of the hellhole that is Twitter and and centralized social media in silicon valley and we are building the future ourselves ck how are you living fully on a bitcoin standard or are you very close are you trying to you know onboard people that that you interact with with bitcoin or merchants like how is your day-to-day with bitcoin yeah i mean i spend all my time on bitcoin that's for sure um Yeah, to be honest, you know, right now, I think it's a tough time to like be on a full Bitcoin standard, especially if you live in the US, we really need to work on the circular economy. And maybe it's not every merchant, but like the key merchants we need to right. So like, where does our power come from? Where does our food come from? You know, we need liquidity with Bitcoin uh, across the board there. uh, Because, you know, that if you when push comes to shove, if we have to switch to only using Bitcoin's money, or if we only have access to our Bitcoin, we no longer have access to our cuck bucks, um, you know, we're going to need to purchase those services. So, um, you know, I don't think that we're quite there yet. Uh, my whole shtick right now for Bitcoiners is, uh, you know, whatever amount of Bitcoin you can hodl from the bottom of the S curve to the top of the S curve is going to be worth an enormous amount. So from a personal finance perspective, your main goal should be accumulate as much Bitcoin now while staying solvent. So maintain to make, make sure to maintain your lifestyle at a certain level, make sure to, uh, ma- you know, maintain multiple bags. So like maybe you have your hodl forever bag, uh, and, or hodl till Bitcoin hyper Bitcoinization bag. And then, uh, your like operating capital bag, whether that's USD or whether that is some other fiat, or whether that is Bitcoin itself. Um, it's really about that personal finance, uh, know how in order to stay solvent because the sad thing is people who have to 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 spend down their hodl stash uh, in order to you know make a statement of you know being on a Bitcoin standard or whatever you know it, it's something that a Bitcoin standard is something that as a society we need to move towards and individuals can kind of be on different tracks uh, towards that but ultimately uh, I think the most important thing is personal finance chops and personal finance literacy that will enable you to weather, you know, the crazy storm that is the fiat system breaking down. And I love that you say this all the time. What's generational wealth going to be? 37 sats, baby. 37 37 sats sats is generational wealth. And hey, you know, people are like, you are a hyperbolic idiot. You're losing your credibility by making such a stupid ass comment. And you know, the only thing I know is that in 95 years, the block award is going to be 37 sats. So Bitcoin's binary. It either works or it doesn't. So you tell me uh, if Bitcoin works 95 years from now, uh, I think in an enormous amount of energy, probably more Terra, probably more hashes than we can even contemplate today will be freaking directed at mining those 37 sats. So my guess is that 37 sats equals generational wealth. Look, that's a that's a good theory. And speaking of theories, we got what eighty five days until uh, Bitcoin reaches a million dollars or whatever. What what's your what's your thoughts on Balaji's claims? Really good marketing. Uh, his best point is that the uh, regulators knew that these banks were insolvent last February, 
Uh, there was uh, Fed reports talking about over 300 banks that are in big financial trouble due to uh, their long duration debt that was underwater. Uh, and uh, and then on the flip side, the only coherent uh, mental model, the only coherent worldview uh, that is going to help people navigate the shit show that has been brought upon us by our regulators and by our financial system is the Bitcoin maximalist perspective. So. Um, I'm pretty convinced that Bitcoin maximalists, we've been right. Uh, unfortunately, the Fed is going to blow this shit up. They're breaking stuff as we speak. Uh, and the FOMC meeting yesterday uh, really does show that they're going to continue to try to save, sp save face. Uh, and it's going to take some time for things to play out. You know, I don't think that Bitcoin's going to hit a million dollars in uh, in 85 days. Dang it. Uh, but at the same time, Balaji is making a statement. Uh, I think that he's definitely getting a lot of uh, a lot of headlines around Bitcoin, uh, and it goes to show even shitcoiners are good for Bitcoin. So um, the only the only worldview that's coherent right now is the Bitcoin maximalist worldview, the Bitcoin only coalition. So uh, that's what we're here to celebrate at the Bitcoin conference, which is uh, whether it's OG Bitcoiners or whether it is scared uh, Bitcoin interested pre coiners. Uh, we're trying to educate everyone because. Uh, we have a lot of people that we need to educate on Bitcoin uh, and whether Bitcoiners do it and it's nice and easy for them or whether uh, central bankers do it uh, in a very painful touch the stove type of uh, experience. Uh, you know, it's going to happen regardless. So we're trying to, you know, bring as much people into this coalition as possible uh, as quickly as possible. <laughs> Bitcoiners are best in person. And that's why I do, we do the Bitcoin conference. Love it. Um Here's a, a kind of loaded question. Maybe it, it it seems to be a tough one, but I love asking it. What is the most important aspect of Bitcoin to you? Uh, well, I've said that I have an unpopular opinion, which is that um, the implications of Bitcoin mining might be greater than the implications of sound money on the planet. So um, I really do think that uh, Bitcoin mining is a mechanism to take us from this tier zero Kardashev society uh, all the way up to a society that harnesses uh, all the energy that's available to us in our solar system. So that's a pretty big brained idea, but that idea is kind of aligned with 37 sats equals generational wealth. Ultimately, more access to cheaper electricity across the planet makes more things possible. And that's something that uh, our small pea brains can't really wrap our brains around, but uh, it's all about the energy. So Bitcoin mining is, uh, to me, the distributed proof of work uh, is just such a powerful, powerful misunderstood tool that is going to be extremely important for humanity. Yeah, I um, I tend to be a mining maximalist myself. Uh, I think that, you know, I, I love I, I love in me and Peter's interview we made the joke about it's like a mini Federal Reserve but everyone has one so it's decentralized um, but it, it's mining is mining has shown uh, it really takes like there's a lot that goes into it at this point in time it's not very sexy like it was whenever Bitcoin kept going up to sixty nine thousand and they were seemingly actual money printers. I didn't even get into mining until, you know, like, I want to say it w was back down in in the 20s or 30s, I want to say, uh, and it kept going further down, and you saw a lot of minor capitulation, um, but it just learning about mining has shown me just, like, what what is different about Bitcoin versus, you know, the actual Federal Reserve, because th there is actual, like, competition, there's actual... Uh, energy being used rather than, you know, 12 old white people in, in D.C. saying like, yep, turn it on. Um, but yeah, mining is, uh, mining, I, I love, I love mining. Mining is just so fun. It, it's, the, the hum of ASICs is now like just soothing to me. Um, so I, I'm a big time, big time mining maximalist. I really am excited to look at uh, the mining village and and look at all the all the companies that are represented. Um, who is going to be there that you can share from the uh, mining industry? 
I mean, you could just go to our website and, and check out the sponsors. Uh, you know, one that has been getting people really excited is uh, is Shell is going to be sponsoring for this year and next year. Okay. Uh, but, you know, just some names, CleanSpark, uh, Pegapool, Foundry, Bitmain, Shell. Uh, they're going to be in the mining village. Uh, Scott's Crypto Mining, uh, White Rock, BitFarms, JetCool, NiceHash. Uh, just so many, you know, I could just keep reading off, yeah. but you can go to the site yourself, uh, tons of miners, what's miners going to be there, bit deer, uh, ant pool. So the, the who's who in the mining space, they're all going to be there, bit digital. Um, so again, if you're really interested in working for one of these companies, uh, ASIC jungle, um, you're going to want to be a part of this event. Yeah. If y'all can't find me, just go check the mining village. You'll probably find me there. Um, that's awesome. Okay, last thing that I want to pick your brain on, um, I want to know, have you always been a Bitcoiner, or did you go down the shitcoin rabbit hole? So, I, I talk about this a lot, but like pretty much every, you know, interview you do, they're like, what's your Bitcoin story? Uh, I was super, super lucky. Oh, so, you- my, my story is really... Uh, fall of 2017, I got introduced to Bitcoin by a friend who's like not even that into Bitcoin right now, but she was like, hey, Bitcoin, best investment I ever made. And I was like, all right, let me like actually research this thing. So uh, prior to researching it, I was act- I'd, d- I'd done university research on open source technology development. Um, I was intimately and very passionate. I was very intimate and passionate about uh, personal finance and like what like how to you know put yourself in position to succeed financially and like the skills around personal finance um and i was a libertarian so and oh and on top of that i was working in silicon valley and i had worked for multiple shitty startups that had gotten pretty sizable venture funding so like the combination of those four things really primed me to see past the shitcoin scam that was in 2017 was the ico mania so ico mania was going on uh, I discovered Bitcoin, I discovered crypto. I knew that there's something big here because I got money, I got open source development. I understood how proprietary government fiat was. Uh, and, uh, you know, I first weekend I had actually done some research. I was like, holy shit, I need to get into this. I bought Bitcoin, I bought Ethereum, I bought Litecoin, I bought everything that was on Coinbase. Um, and as I, and I was instantly obsessed. Uh, so as I was researching over the course of like the next, you know, three months, you know, from like, uh, what, September until November, um, I, you know, I was, e- I was eating everything up. I had an open mind. I was learning about it all. I was listening to the bad crypto podcasts and all this kind of horse shit. But I, I started to like think to myself, because I'm inherently skeptical. I was like, well, there has to be something wrong with blockchain. Because like, why are these ICOs raising so much money? Like I've, I've worked at startups that actually have real products and real founders in Silicon Valley, not just white papers. And they're, they're, they're one, they're shitty. So I knew you didn't have to be a good project to raise money, but two, like, um, you know, they're, they're actually raising exponentially less money in order of magnitude, less money than these ICOs. So I just started Googling what's wrong with blockchain, what's wrong with crypto. Um, and the only coherent voices were, kind of like the early resemblance of the Bitcoin ecosystem. So at the time, there's things like the World Crypto Network. Uh, there's Tone Vase and Jimmy Song show. Uh, there's Ansel Lindner, who's actually my co-host on FedWatch on Bitcoin Magazine now. And these were the only voices that are saying, no, there's something wrong with ICOs. No, there's something wrong with this crypto thing. You know, there's something wrong with the blockchain. And all of them were Bitcoin maximalists. So between like discovering Bitcoin in 20 in, uh, in t- September of 2017 to like November of 2017, I had gone from, oh, I'm interested in crypto to Bitcoin maximalist. So I, I really did uh, kind of go through that journey pretty quickly. Uh, and then I quit my job two weeks before Christmas uh, 2017. So if you go look at the chart right now, that's pretty much the top. So I quit my job at the top. I guarantee you all my coworkers were laughing their asses off at me. Uh, But I bought tickets to the North American Bitcoin conference, which was a total shitcoin conference. Like they literally had banana. I I wish I took photos because it was just so ridiculous. And I didn't even fathom how ridiculous it was at the time. But they literally had banana coin and radiology chain pop ups at the conference. But 
thankfully also there was the BTC Inc team. They had a, a whole booth area for Bitcoin magazine. Uh, and I met the CRO, I shook his hand. I said, Bitcoin, San Francisco sales. Uh, and uh, I got a gig like a month later. So the rest is history. That's uh, you lucky dog. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasted so much money and time thinking that the future of finance was behind a token called Pancake. Um, it was it was ridiculous. There there's a there was one girl at Costa Rica named Roya who was actually on Noster, had no idea about Bitcoin or anything like that, and we were like, okay, you're a rare breed that is here, not from you know Bitcoin. But then she learned about Bitcoin, and now she's like a hardcore Bitcoin maximalist. And we were like, you pure, pure soul. Like, you never had to go through shitcoin bubbles or anything like that. Like, we wish that we could have all been like you. But um, it, it's beautiful to see, and I think that I think that a lot of maximalists are being born now uh, th- that are either, you know, they went through their, their shitcoinery, and they're like, okay, maybe they were right. Um, or, you know, they're just bypassing it altogether and realizing like, Hey, something's wrong with the U S dollar, the biggest shit coin. And I think that this is the saving grace to that. Um, so I'm excited to see the future. Uh, it's going to be a rocky road. Don't get me wrong, but I, I think that, uh, it's, it's a positive one to say the, the very least, but, uh, Carl, did you have anything you wanted to add on anything you wanted to touch on? Yeah, Christian, I see that uh, Casey Rodarmer is speaking at the conference. What's your opinion as a Bitcoin maxi on ordinals? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I I personally prefer to say like Bitcoin only or Bitcoiner and part of the Bitcoin coalition. Uh, But uh, I think everything is good for Bitcoin. Um, Personally, uh, I'm not super into investing in NFTs, uh, but... Uh, I, I'm personal friends with Casey. Uh, I recommended his show Hell Money podcast before Ordinals launched and before inscriptions went viral. Mm-hmm. So, uh, big fan of Casey. I think he's brilliant. Uh, you know, again, personally, I, I I wouldn't personally invest in a JPEG. Uh, I think that uh, a SAT equals a SAT, but at the same time, so, uh, value is subjective, and someone might value uh, you know a uh, a jpeg on the blockchain for whatever reason someone might value an early sat for whatever reason that does not diminish bitcoin's fungibility in any way uh and i don't think that that hurts bitcoin's blockchain in any way if anything it's shown that's been extremely positive for bitcoin's blockchain more people are running full nodes today more uh blocks are waiting in a massive queue in the blockchain uh more fees are being paid to miners you know all the positive metrics are going up so uh, I'm not here to judge how someone wants to use their money, uh, but I do care deeply about what is good for Bitcoin. And thankfully for me, everything's good for Bitcoin. That's a that's a, that's a b- the best answer. I, like that's what I try to make into my thoughts is like you can do it. It 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 doesn't. I don't care about it. Is it weird? Maybe to me at least. But like I'm still gonna. TikTok next block and use my Bitcoin how I normally do. And, you know, if I accidentally get one of your UTXOs that has a uh, early sat or something like that, cool. I don't care. I'm going to still just spend it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, that's a good answer. Um, Cause it's been very polarizing, I think. And I think that the, the worst thing about ordinals is the polarization and, and kind of like arguments that have come from it. Like, it, like you said, everything's good for. Bitcoin. I think that's the best thing about them. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, it's an education process. I, and, I can see you know, that. Here's something that's different about the Bitcoin community than uh, the toxic fiat community is that people can have arguments and people can use logic and people can change their mind. Unlike the toxic fiat community where uh, you get canceled, you get deleted, you get your bank suppressed, uh, you you get, lose your job uh that's toxic so uh i'm you know the polarization it's it's a learning experience the reality is is people just need to internalize this you are stupid you cannot forecast what bitcoin will do right bitcoin moves in ways that are mysterious to us because we can't see the whole picture we're all blind touching the elephant we can't identify what the fuck is going on so i think ordinals is a great learning experience for a lot of Bitcoiners that just frankly were not humble to the lack of knowledge that they have of this thing. 
A lot of Bitcoiners think of themselves as, I've spent 10,000 hours on this thing. I understand what it's about. And the answer is no, you do not. The best Bitcoin developers have not been born yet. The best Bitcoin projects and use cases have not been invented yet. And if you think that you can identify them, then why haven't you already identified them? You have, you're, you're just not that smart. And guess what? I'm not that smart, but I'm at least humble enough to recognize my stupidity. And I think that puts me in an advantage. Well, CK, thank you for joining us for the first episode of Between Two Nodes. Anything you want to plug, uh, say to the world, and uh, you know, just put put some put some words out there. What you got? You know, uh, great interview. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor being the inaugural guest here. If I could just say anything, uh, collect Bitcoin collectibles in terms of buy a Bitcoin magazine because that shit is part of history. Uh, go to the Bitcoin conference because that is the physical instantiation of the Bitcoin community and the Bitcoin coalition. Uh, that's going to be the most the most uh, pertinent event is May 18th through the 20th in Miami Beach, Bitcoin 2023. Don't miss out on that and get more bullish. So no matter how bullish you are on Bitcoin, you're not, you're not smart enough. enough to, you're not smart enough to be bullish enough. Uh, so be humble, get more bullish. Uh, and yeah, thanks for being part of Bitcoin. Thanks for listening. Let's go. Stay tuned for the next episode, uh, whenever that may be. Um, we don't know what we're doing, but thanks for watching, guys.